Have you ever heard of a device known as a radio sound? I'm guessing not many have, but if I said weather balloon, I'm willing to bet that term would be more familiar, huh? Well, way, way back in the late 1800s, meteorologists started sending hydrogen or helium-filled balloons into the upper atmosphere to gather information about conditions aloft. They would do that so that they could make more accurate weather forecasts. These balloons carried pretty crude data recorders. They were mainly mechanical devices, to an altitude of about 110,000 feet. At the low air pressure at that altitude, the balloons would expand and then finally burst, and the recorder would drift back to Earth under a parachute. There was a big problem with this, though. Scientists had to rely on someone finding the recorder and returning it to the weather station before they could examine the data. Imagine the odds of that happening, and you have a pretty good idea of why they were highly motivated to find a solution. Well, the solution was radio. Rather than waiting for random chance to deliver the data, why not equip the recorder with a radio transmitter and send back the data in real time? The first recorded launch of such a device was by Robert Bureau in France, who gave the name Radioson to his device, in case you're interested, the anniversary of that first launch is January 7, 1929, and it's celebrated as Radioson Day, at least by some people. The first practical Radioson was developed by a Russian scientist named Pavel Molochov in 1930. The next year, Professor Vilho Viasala of Finland designed and flew a more sophisticated Radioson and in 1936, he established the Viasala company to manufacture the devices, and they're still doing so today. On December 23, 1955, the first successful U.S. radio sound flight was made from Blue Hill Observatory in Massachusetts. And the rest, as they say, is history. Now, I find this next bit of information amazing. Did you know that every day at 1200 and 2400 UTC, Weather stations across the entire planet all launch radiosondes. To give you an idea of the scope of this, there are 92 radiosond launching stations just in the United States. That means that every day, twice a day, a total of 184 balloons take to the sky. Multiply that figure times 365 days in a year, and you have a pretty staggering annual total. The flight profile is just the same as it was in the 1930s, though. A neoprene balloon hauls the radio sound to about 110,000 feet, give or take. The balloon bursts, and the device falls back to Earth with a parachute. During the flight, which they call a sounding, by the way, the radio sound transmits data about temperature, humidity, air pressure, altitude, and a few more parameters. Thanks to radio technology, the meteorologists don't have to wait and hope that someone finds the radio sound, although the devices still have instructions about how to return them, along with a postage paid envelope. The radio sounds transmit their telemetry on one of two frequency bands, 400 to 406 MHz and 1675 to 1700 megahertz. And yes, you can receive these signals. The transmitter output is less than 100 milliwatts, but at 100,000 feet, their antennas have an impressive line-of-sight range. Most of those who listen to radio sounds are doing so between 400 and 406 megahertz using ordinary receivers, FM receivers, really. Quite a few ham transceivers have extended receive coverage that includes this range. Others use software-defined receivers, and these allow reception in the 1675 to 1700 megahertz range as well. Here's 10 seconds worth of a radio sound signal that I received at 406 megahertz. My antenna is just a dual-band 2-meter, 70-centimeter ground plane. Any sort of omnidirectional UHF antenna will do the trick, but I wouldn't recommend you use the rubber duck antennas you find on dual-band handheld radios. Those are rather poor antennas under the best circumstances. They're fine for working powerful terrestrial repeaters, but they really don't do well with milliwatt signals 20 miles away, even if the path is line of sight. So it's one thing to listen to these twice-a-day signals, but what about decoding the telemetry? Well, you can do this too. 
All the data is out in the open and nothing is encrypted. There's software available that will take the audio from your radio and process it to extract the information. Just go to any web browser and do a Google search and enter Radioson, that's spelled R-A-D-I-O-S-O-N-D-E, Radioson software, and you'll find several choices. Recently, I was corresponding with Tony Lecren, F4GOH, about a different approach to receiving and decoding Radioson data. He's using a tiny TTGO ESP32 development board, and he uses its Bluetooth capability to pair it with his Android smartphone. It's called the My Sandy Go project, and it uses an app on the smartphone to process and decode the data. We're working on getting more information together about the project for an eclectic technology column in a future issue of QST Magazine, so be on the lookout. In the meantime, just try listening for the radio sounds. Regardless of where you live, there's a decent chance that you have a weather station not too far away that's launching balloons twice a day. It takes about two hours for the balloon to reach maximum altitude. If you live at the outer edge of the coverage area, this means, for example, if you're trying to receive a radio sound that was launched at 1200 UTC, you may not pick up the signal until about 1400 UTC. Give it a try.